Hey everybody, it's Silvershim, and welcome back to the Blender Solar System. Last time we checked out the sun, and now it's time to start exploring the planets. Some things to know about my planet scenes. In each case, the X and Y plane here represents the planet's orbital plane. And, as you can see out here, I have the planet's orbits modeled with a point light on it in order to represent its orbit around the sun as though it were centered on the planet. So I'll go into more detail about this planet's orbit later, just something to know. I should also say that I do not plan on really covering the materials I used to make the planets look realistic. I'm not that much of a materials guy, so I'm going to focus on the mathematics I use in modeling the planets. So without further ado, let's begin with our first planet, Mercury. So, Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system and also the one closest to the sun. Due to its closeness to the sun, it orbits faster than any other planet. The ancients could see how fast it moved through the sky, and that is why it is named after the Roman messenger of the gods, whose Greek equivalent was called Hermes. Referring to Mercury, your proper adjectives are Mercurian or Mercurial. I think Mercurial is pretty rare. You'll usually see Mercurian. Mercury is a terrestrial planet. That essentially means it's like Earth. Terrestrial means like Earth. In that it is mostly made of rock and metal. Like I said, it is the smallest planet. It has a diameter just under 5,000 kilometers, which is less than half of Earth's. However, it is quite massive for its size. It is the second densest planet after Earth. It is actually the densest if you take out the effects of gravitational compression. And as you can see, it's got a pretty barren landscape with quite a lot of craters. And unlike most planets, Mercury does not have an atmosphere, which is the layer of gases that surrounds most planets. Instead, it just has a very thin exosphere, which which barely holds any heat in. As such, while Mercury is extremely hot during the daytime, due to its closest to the sun, its temperature is well below freezing at night. Mercury rotates on its axis in just under 59 days. And unlike most planets, its axial tilt is almost zero. Like, you'll get values as low as a 30th of a degree for its axial tilt, so Mercury has no seasonal variation. Yeah, pretty much none whatsoever. Mercury takes just under 88 days to orbit the sun. And this value is approximately 1.5 times that of its rotation period of 59 days. That makes it so that Mercury has a 3 to 2 spin orbit resonance. For every two orbits it makes around the sun, it rotates on its axis three times. Now because of this resonance, an actual solar day on Mercury, sunrise to sunrise, is actually twice as long as its year, which is 176 Earth days. And briefly show what kind of effect this has. I'll slow it down a bit for you 
so you can kind of better see its rotation and there we go with that out of the way it's time to check out Mercury's orbit okay so here we are back in my solar system file and as you can see here, in addition to the Sun, I have added Mercury's orbit. Now, as a bit of a disclaimer, I really don't want to get into how complicated it was to make the orbits. Like, actually shaping the orbits was fine, but when it came to making the planets orbit, like speeding up as they get closer to the Sun, yeah, it took a lot of ingenuity and patience and figuring out a lot of stuff anyway this dot we have over here is mercury and like i said it orbits the sun in about 88 days Now, Mercury's orbit is the most eccentric of any planet. What that basically means is it's pretty far from a perfect circle. At its closest approach to the Sun, perihelion, it is about 46 million kilometers away from the Sun, and its furthest distance from the Sun, aphelion, is about 70 million kilometers. On average, it's about 58 million kilometers from the Sun, which is about one-third of an astronomical unit, more than that. An astronomical unit is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun, so on average, Mercury is about one-third of the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Well, from the Sun to the Earth, more accurately. Now, Mercury also has the most inclined orbit of any planet. As you can see, relative to the ecliptic plane I was talking about before, it is tilted at about 7 degrees. And now for one last thing. I have parented a camera to Mercury in order to show off an interesting phenomenon with its orbit. I'll go ahead and open up another window here. Hit zero to go into the camera view. And watch what happens as Mercury approaches its closest approach to the sun, which is about here. There we go. Yes. See that? First of all, it takes, like I said, a solar day on Mercury is 176 Earth days. So, so I'm going to go back here. As you can see, the sun appeared to stop for a second and then continue on. The reason for this is that while Mercury's rotational velocity, the speed at which it rotates, is pretty much constant, at least over long periods of time, it doesn't change much, its orbital velocity is not. Like I said, Mercury orbits faster when it's closer to the Sun. Now, when Mercury approaches its absolute closest approach to the Sun, its orbital velocity actually briefly exceeds its rotational velocity, making the Sun appear to move backwards relative to its usual apparent motion in Mercury's sky. You can see right there, Mercury is orbiting faster than it's rotating for just a few days. Pretty interesting.
because of that, the places where that happens with the sun directly overhead are the two hottest points on Mercury. So that's about it for Mercury. Next time on our tour through the Blender Solar System, we'll be moving on to the next planet. See you then.